The Seven. In the world of the boys, they are the most powerful superhero team in existence. But just how powerful are they? We know that Vought does their best to exaggerate the feats of their heroes to make them seem more powerful than they actually are, so in this video we won't be taking any statements from any Vought employee as fact here. Pretty much anyone other than the Seven or the boys have no credibility in this universe when it comes to properly scaling these characters. As we always do, we will be discussing the strength, speed, durability, and any extra powers that these characters may have. Because there are only 8 episodes and not too much action shown in the show, we can easily cover all of the 7 in one video. So with that being said, let's get started. So the first member of the 7 that I'd like to discuss is Black Noir, and the reason I want to talk about him first is he only had one fight in the series, and it gives me the opportunity to discuss the female as well. So as we see in the show, Black Noir is incredibly skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat. He takes on the female who had been absolutely fodderizing thugs and even trained policemen throughout the series, but Black Noir is able to match her superhuman speed and strength and then eventually outskill her to a point where he was able to land a fatal blow, killing her. Well, kind of. So, to put Black Noir's strength into perspective a bit, remember when A-Train fought the female? He slammed Kimiko through a solid concrete wall and then proceeded to bounce her head off of the concrete at super speed. And despite all of this, Kimiko was not only able to recover, but she didn't seem to be phased by their encounter at all. And during her battle with Black Noir, he had torn her up so badly that she was unresponsive and it took a few minutes for her to regenerate, which did eventually revive her. As for durability, Black Noir took multiple hits from the female and shrugged all of them off. Keep in mind that Kimiko was able to shatter A-Train's leg, which would scale her to his level of strength, because again, he slammed her through a concrete wall, so by applying Newton's third law, A-Train's body should be able to withstand the amount of force that he can put out. If Black Noir follows the same trajectory that he does in the comics, there's no doubt that he will be the most powerful soup in the entire show. And if you want more information on that, click the card. Since we've already discussed A-Train for a bit, let's talk about his power level next. As I said earlier, his strength and durability is roughly wall level, meaning he can attack and endure roughly 15 kilojoules of energy. Not only did he punch Kimiko through a concrete wall, but he also completely destroyed Robin's body by accidentally running into it, so his attack potency is pretty consistent. As for lifting strength, we saw A-Train pulling A-Train while recovering from a broken leg. He is able to pull what looks like three train cars plus the locomotive. Now, I'm no train expert here, and it's entirely possible that this train extends even further, but after researching trains and the weight of trains for entirely too long, I found that each car weighs approximately 30 tons and the locomotive can weigh up to 200 tons. So if we assume the train he's pulling is only three cars long and the locomotive weighs 200 tons, then a train was pulling a train that weighed 580,000 pounds while recovering on a broken leg. But I know you guys just want to know how fast a train is, and that's a little bit harder to figure out. As a child, he was stated to be able to outrun bullets, but before his race with Shockwave, he was stated to be able to run over 1,000 miles per hour. But while amped up on Compound V, he sets a time of 371 meters per second, or 830 miles per hour, during this race, which is just over Mach 1 or roughly supersonic. But here's where things get really tricky. In his final fight with Starlight, He's able to react to and dodge her light attacks, which at a low ball would put him near light speed as Starlight's ability was implied to be light throughout the series. This may just be a crazy outlier, or maybe, just maybe, his overdose of Compound V, which nearly killed him, did amp him to these insane speeds. I would say that it's likely an outlier as his previous provable top speed is 800,000 times slower than how fast he was moving during his fight with Starlight. 
As for other abilities, we see he's able to recover very, very quickly as his shattered leg did recover entirely in the span of a few days, but he was amped up on a compound V during this recovery time, so it's hard to say how good his recovery abilities actually are. Now let's talk about the deep, everyone's favorite dolphin loving super asshole. Unfortunately for our guy, the deep, he doesn't really have any impressive feats. He's got super strength and super speed as he does casually dodge attacks from thugs while knocking them out each with one punch. He's also got the ability to breathe underwater using the gills on his chest. He can speak to all manner of sea life, including mammals, and he has enhanced sight as he's able to see in the murky water. Basically, he's Walmart brand Aquaman with 100% higher chances to sexually assault you. Now, can we please get into the coolest character in the show? Lamplighter, that's right. So, Lamplighter burns some kids down to ash. And according to the Federation of British Cremation Authorities, it takes 300 kilowatt hours of energy to completely ash a human body. Converting that into joules, you get roughly one gigajoule. And converting that, you get 0.24 tons of TNT, which is roughly small building level. So without even being shown on screen, he's already the most powerful member of the seven that we've discussed. What a beast. As for Lamplighter's replacement, Starlight, she's pretty powerful as well, and it's unfortunate we didn't get to see her more in fights because I think she could end up challenging Maeve and Homelander for strongest member of the Seven. Not only is she physically powerful, shown at the start of the show when she's training to join the Seven, she lifts up the rear end of a Buick Century sedan and then punches clean through concrete, but she isn't just strong. She's been trained in martial arts and is easily able to take out mercenaries during the final episode episode using a combination of her strength, speed, and fighting ability. As for durability, she's pretty insane. When Huey confronts her, she is shot in the chest at close range by a high caliber rifle. And while this does pierce her skin and cause her to bleed, it does not go all the way through her body and the next day she had recovered fully from the wounds. Just to give this feat a little bit more weight, the gun Billy Butcher shot her with is a Serbu BFG-50A, which can output 20,337 joules and is able to puncture nearly an inch of hardened steel plating at 100 yards. But her most well-known ability, of course, is her unique power to fire blasts of intensely bright light from her hands, which may or may not be light speed. These blasts are capable of throwing grown men several feet, blinding anyone who looks directly at them, and she claims that she could burn out the deep's eyes with these blasts as well. She can even amp up these attacks further by absorbing the electricity around her, which is pretty damn cool. Okay, we have finally come to the character you all came here for, that's right translucent. One of my favorite characters in the show didn't last long, but he was a joy while he was on screen. Of course, his strength is above that of a normal human's. He was easily able to toss around flat screen TVs like they were frisbees, and I don't care how light they're making those things today. Throwing it with this much force is impressive. As for speed, he doesn't seem to be blessed with any above human speeds. He was struck by a car and Butcher was able to keep up with his attacks despite the fact that Translucent was mostly invisible at the time. And let's talk about that invisibility. Translucent can rearrange the molecules of his carbon skin into new material, which can become nearly impenetrable, as well as invisible. While caged by the boys, they electrocute him with an electrical current strong enough to, quote, put down a water buffalo. But this simply knocks him out and doesn't do any lasting damage, and Frenchie states that it's not gonna kill him. But his most impressive feat by far is when he was shot point blank by a high caliber rifle using a round coated in the same material as his skin. This is the same gun that Billy shoots Starlight with later in the series and as we stated earlier, this rifle is no joke. Now you may be wondering, if his skin is so strong then how the hell did Huey blow him to bits? Wouldn't his skin just keep all of his insides on the inside? Well. 
I would assume that he had no reason to harden his skin at this point. He thought Huey was gonna let him live, and even if he did harden his skin, he would still die, so he probably just chose not to do it. Alright, now we finally made it to the big guns. Queen Maeve, one of the most powerful soups in the entire world. As a child, she stopped a moving train with a single punch despite it breaking her entire arm. And as an adult, she easily dispatches three train fighters, jumps in front of a moving truck, stopping it in its tracks, and completely turning it to bits. She is unfazed when hit in the face by a metal bat, she can snap necks with a casual turn of her wrist, and her suit is entirely bulletproof. It's also implied that her skin is bulletproof as well, but since she's never shot anywhere on her skin, I'm gonna assume that it's just her suit for now until we get more information. All these feats and she still hasn't displayed a fraction of her total power. In terms of speed, she easily outpaces moving vehicles and she's fast enough to even run on walls. Other than basic stat amps, she doesn't seem to have any additional powers that we know of, so maybe we'll find out more in Season 2. Okay, enough beating around the bush. Let's talk. Let's talk about Popclaw. <laughs> no, I, I'm just kidding. She sucks. All right. I can even squat over 700 pounds for an hour straight. Just give me that compound V and we'll see who's really the strongest. No, I'm, we're talking about Homelander. We're going to talk about Homelander. Of course, Homelander is easily the most powerful member of the Seven, but his top strength is unquantifiable at this time as we haven't ever seen him go all out. In the first episode, he casually cuts a jet in half, and we know he's physically superior to every other member of the Seven, past or present, so using Maeve and Lamplighter's feats, we can easily scale him to building level in terms of strength and durability, and of course, he's likely far higher than this. And Stillwell makes a claim that there isn't a weapon on Earth that they haven't thrown at him. So if we assume that this is true, and he has been hit with a literal nuke, then his durability would far exceed his fellow members of the Seven. The most powerful nuclear weapon on record is the SAR bomb, which yielded roughly 50 megatons of TNT, which for scaling purposes puts Homelander in the city level, leaving the likes of Maeve far behind. As for speed, he can easily outpace jets, which can fly at over 600 miles per hour, and unlike Maeve, Homelander does have a wide array of abilities beyond basic superhuman strength, speed, and durability. Being a stand-in for Superman, he pretty much just has all the abilities of the Man of Steel. He can fly, he has heat vision, x-ray vision, which can only be stopped by zinc, and he has enhanced hearing as well. Of course, none of his abilities are on the level of Superman, but we haven't seen the upper limit of Homelander's strength just yet, so Season 2 could really surprise us. So that's all I've got for you guys today. What do you think? Do you think that the seven are pretty powerful or do you think they're pretty weak? Let me know down in the comments what you think. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter at Garrick underscore KI. You can follow Key Issues as well at Key Issues Cast and the rest of our social media is on screen. If you'd like to support the channel directly, consider becoming a member. And with that said, remember the motto, it's the seven over everything. And I'll see you guys next time.